Welcome back to the Alcat project. So, uh, this has been uh, more or less on ice for quite a while. Uh, what's happened was I essentially just uh, uh, assembled this into a minimum viable vehicle and I've been sort of uh, using it uh, on and off uh, since then. Because uh, when you last saw this, uh, I was uh, just sort of uh, putting together the battery system and I was using this really terrible, uh, hacky BMS solution. And uh, I started researching if I should, uh, you know, buy some pre-made uh, BMS or something, uh, and none of that really panned out. There were no options which I considered suitable. So I just kept using this terrible thing, because in the meantime, there's been a lot of development work on this thing. This is uh, Tin Can BMS the first uh, prototype, and uh, this is essentially a uh, plug-in uh, BMS which will talk directly to uh, the boards on the Tesla modules and uh, drive a contact uh, and do some other stuff. Uh, basically acting as a sort of basic BMS slash uh, VCU sort of deal. And uh, tonight, I'm hopefully gonna be driving out with this, uh, the first prototype version of a board, including some bodge jobs of that. You can see my uh, hand-soldered wires. Uh, and uh, it's uh, very early uh, f first version software, which we got working and sort of bench-tested uh, just a couple of days ago. So basically, uh, what this thing can do right now, if, if everything works, is it can grab data from the cell packs and uh, it's got uh, quite a bit of uh, protection or all the protection uh, circuitry you'd expect it's got uh, it mon it's monitoring cell voltages temperature uh, it's even got uh, the ability to monitor a current sensor which i probably won't be installing at least not right now uh, and it also takes inputs from like the car to uh, control if uh, like a power on an ignition input start input that sort of thing so it's basically a very basic uh, BMS slash uh, car on off switch. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's uh, not, not a lot of stuff going on. It's got an unimplemented CAN interface there and uh, a very redundant uh, system. That's why I wanted to make this thing because uh, it, not, nothing else I could find when I started this project at least uh, in the way of BMSs, which actually talk to the original Tesla boards on the battery modules, uh, was actually properly safety engineered. Uh, I think at the time there was some version of a simp BMS which basically just used an Arduino, and I'm just not really okay with that. So this thing ha actually has uh, two independent processors uh, which uh, control uh, different parts of the safety circuit. Uh, meaning that if uh, one processor has like a, a bug in the firmware, uh, there's an entirely different processor running an entirely different firmware, uh, which uh, is hopefully going to catch that and uh, render the battery into, sa into a safe state. Uh, for instance, the relay is controlled by one processor and the contact the PWM output is controlled by the other. Uh, so if either processor does something stupid, the other one's gonna go nope and uh, be able to uh, shut everything down, which is, what you want out of a proper safety-oriented uh, BMS solution. Now, as for the work here tonight, I it, it might be a bit of a mess. Right now, this f thing has not been touched. This is a BMS. It's not been touched since I put it in. It's basically just got 12 volts in and uh, contact out and uh, the cell module connector there. It's very bad. We're missing a bunch of wiring for the other BMS, which uh, uh, I might be adding in we'll see because uh, this one doesn't even have any charger automatics the only charge regulation i have aside from the over voltage protection in this thing right now is where the charge is set to a fellow low voltage uh, so yeah we're really really uh, bumming it with this thing so i'm probably gonna have to run some more wiring because i don't think i have enough leads to actually uh, wire everything up I'm not sure if I ever published anything on this, but this is the battery the thermal management system. It's just a heater and a circulation pump. Uh, and uh, at one point I had a uh, 
Cat5 running uh, back here, but it seems I've ripped that out because it wasn't really used. Uh, so we really only have like, uh, I think, four or six leads going back to the battery, uh, plus the, now that can be including the power supply for the BMS. Uh, so that's probably not enough because I need to have uh, at least like the uh, AC present input. We have this little 12 volt power supply and relay, which are giving a power, power uh, 230 volt present signal to control the charging. So there's a bunch of stuff, I, a bunch of extra signals I need to run back here. And I have limited time, so I need to get to that. All right, so since uh, the new BMS is sort of a partial vehicle control unit, which is going to control uh, the charger, it's going to control drive enable for the entire vehicle. It needs AC detect, uh, and there, there are more you know, potential features to be implemented in the future. Uh, it's going to need a lot more than just these three wires for communication with uh, the actual driveline stuff of the car. Also, all the fuses are back here, and the power supply for the entire system comes from back here since there's only high voltage straight from a battery. So, uh, we're going to be running this massive, uh, like, 10 conductor ish cable from the motor box all the way to the battery. This is like 10 times 0.5. Square mill, really nice quality. I ripped it out of some old installation. Uh, well suited for the application, nice and strong, good shielding if necessary. I could probably run the Tesla bus through this to be honest, but we're doing it this way. So I'm just going to be uh, uh, shoving it through this uh, existing uh, pass through since the actual battery pass through. Sadly, it's, uh, there's just no way I can fit a cable that thick uh, through the original uh, battery. The loom is just not enough space, so we have to do it a bit ugly. Uh, the eyes are floating by, so we have uh, the wire with uh, plenty of slack uh, run through. It came through just nice. I uh, cleared up the uh, ends there, got all the fat shielding, a nice big shrink wrap. That's not going to be applied tonight. And I'm slowly but surely uh, doing up a wiring for the actual uh, BMS board. So I figured up a reasonable pin out, and as you can see, I'm happy I used a cable with so many wires because we're going to need them. There are lots of connectors on this thing. Uh, and in the other end, oh, that's the charger. Uh, screaming, I actually, I'm, I'm low on battery. I need to charge this thing while I'm working. So everything is actually powered on right now. Uh, low voltage system, it's fine. So uh, this is the current AC present relay and uh, I'm going to be wiring up uh, to this to actually detect when the AC is present uh, on the BMS. Uh, and let's see, we have one of these wires comes from, yeah, this one comes from the mystery switch. And that's uh, a switch uh, up at the driver's uh, compartment there where I can actually turn the entire BMS system off. So my power supply is going to come to through here. It's going to go into uh, the relay uh, thing uh, like mount here and it's gonna connect out from that that, that makes it easy to uh, just get BMS broken power to various inputs and stuff and slowly I'm gonna wire up most of this to this thing some of the wires are just gonna go straight to where they want to be and soon enough uh, we should actually be able to test some things uh, although this thing is uh, as expected, this is turning into a bigger project than I originally thought. There's just so many little things that need to be done up right. You need to think about them, like how do you actually uh, figure out the AC present setup? How do you actually uh, configure the uh, uh, relay which uh, locks out region or relay which locks out drive if you're charging? So there's a bunch of stuff that's been done sort of in, in hardware back there or it's been done not at all, which is going to go through this thing now. So, it's a bother, but we're getting there, and I'm getting ever closer to actually ripping this old terrible thing out, uh, wiring off the contactors, and uh, hooking this thing up uh, for the first time in the car, which is going to be exciting. And there's the original tin can BMS removed. This thing is so simple, it's just got to... Red wire for positive, black wire for negative, and purple wire for contact to PWM8. And it just takes the uh, Tesla cell modules uh, through this uh, 
uh, wall-mounted RJ45. <laughs> this thing has been a champion. It's been running flawlessly for a long time, but it just doesn't have enough brain power to actually be very viable. It has no idea about charging state or anything. It's, it, it, it just basically checks the uh, cell modules to see if it's allowed to turn on, and if nothing is terrible, uh, then it turns on. That's uh, the fuse for the contact in case the uh, switch uh, transits to short sight. And uh, yeah, <laughs> this thing is just built on what's supposed to be a different project. So you can see, I think that's uh, the flyback diode for the PWM regulator. Uh, just sort of tacked on. This thing is not exactly a safety grade. And the higher software was sort of hammered together in a night or two. It's it's not very good. The new tin can is certainly going to be better. I hope. If it works, it's still untested. All right. So I've got nothing worried about the power. I've verified the polarity many times. Uh, this should power up uh, when I plug it in. We don't have any contact or anything, but uh, and we're missing some inputs. But if uh, this is fine, I should actually be able to hook up my PC and to get some data out of this. So here goes nothing. It's alive, it's not on fire. And we have communication of internal bus. And look at that. If you can see, we have communication with the Tesla modules. Oh, it's a bit faint. But we have a bunch of communication LEDs. Oh man, that's beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. So let's uh, get the PC hooked up and see if we get any useful data. All right, it's connected. It installed the driver for the uh, serial chip. This is the software. So let's see, I've actually never done this before. So we need to select our serial ports. I'm guessing it's going to be COM5, I'm not entirely sure. If it's wrong, it might crash. This is very early. Start. Hey, we got data! And uh, if I recall correctly, this is... I don't remember if 2000 is good or bad. It might actually be bad, it might be inhibiting startup for some reason. But we have a bunch of information. This is beautiful, I'll need to go through it. We definitely have all the modules. We might actually not be configured for the right module count. No, it's set to zero, so I need to mess around with this and see if we can get this uh, to play nice. Aha! Uh -huh. I was alarmed there for a moment because I couldn't quite get it to take a new configuration. But as you can tell, I'm not using the most modern PC. <laughs> And the UI has a button, save configuration, which was just about being cut off by the lower edge of the screen, so I couldn't see and I couldn't apply a config. But I've now actually got uh, this uh, uh, set up. It, it was reported set to two, two modules, and because of that it was locking us out because uh, it won't let you actually turn on the contactor if it detects a different number of modules than what's actually configured. Uh, that's like a sa safe, sa sa safe, sa fail safe in case one module goes weird and you still get a data link to the Tesla modules, but uh, like it doesn't re doesn't register itself. Uh, so I fixed that, and uh, now uh, if we take a look, we have a meter set to duty cycle, and it's uh, prodded into the main contact output. Now, this uh, has an internal uh, contact economizer because the Tesla contactors require that. They uh, don't run on 12 volts. They run on, like, 1.7-ish watts per contact, and you need to manually set that up. And if we flick the switch there, in a moment, I think it might already... Yeah, it already said click. And look at that. We're getting PWM out. And in the software, if we go to live data, uh, we actually have uh, zero on uh, the contactor locate variable, and uh, that means that we're ready to go. 
This means that the BMS is okay with the data it's getting and all the inputs as, as configured and it's fine with uh, uh, letting us drive. Uh, I, I was right in that if, if this value is anything but zero, uh, the BMS will not allow you to run. So any, any part of a program code that makes this into anything but a zero will lock you out. No. Ah, Jesus Christ. That's the uh, brake pump. Now we don't actually have a contact that's hooked up. Uh, we don't have uh, much hooked up at all. Uh, I'm just looking at all the inputs are actually analog and we can see we're getting good data on those. I need to uh, make sure the uh, the current sensor is not enabled because I won't have time to hook that up. It might do funny stuff when we get noise in the system. Other than that, it's looking pretty good. It says no balancing going on and these batteries are actually somewhat unbalanced. They're not perfect. Well, actually, they are basically perfect. It's amazing. These passengers haven't been balanced since 2015. They've been driving in this car for like damn near two years now and they're still basically in perfect balance. That is that is impressive, I have to say. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, whether the balancing works is uh, we have a very, very, very basic balance uh, set up going. Where is it? Where's the balancing? Yeah, there we go. It's basically as long as the cell voltage is above 4 volts, it'll run the shunts until they win 20 millivolts of each other, and then it'll just uh, stop. Uh, uh, so it, it's, it's just like after charge uh, balancing, basically very, very rudimentary. This is an absolute alpha firmware and alpha config. But yeah, uh, now I actually can hook up my contactors and make sure we're not uh, putting too much power into them. We shouldn't because I, we have verified on the test bench that uh, the PWM generator for the uh, contactor economizer works as it should. So really, click that was the uh, re safety relay clicking off and the contactors uh, disengaging. So yeah, time to hook up the contactors and see if we can actually get high voltage. Fingers crossed. All right, here we go. Uh, so we now have the contactor output. It's going through my uh, current clamp meter and we're straight on to the contactors on the other side of the battery there. So if all works well, uh, we should hear a lot of clicking when I turn on the key. And we have 600 milliamps in the contactors, which is roughly what we want, and if we uh, try to stick up probes one-handed in there, that might not be the easiest thing. Yeah, you're, you're going to have to take my word for it. We have uh, exactly the duty cycle set here, uh, about 35%. So, uh, we have should have high voltage now. If we uh, go back to the car and uh, measure we should be able to see ta -da! 68 volts out the back of the car so we should actually be able to spin the motor now for the first time on the new BMS unless I've done something really wrong I put it in neutral start Motor is spinning. And the BMS is not instantly dying. Beautiful. It's alive! It's alive! And... Off it goes in a couple of seconds after. Beautiful. Finally. This is the first real test of the Tinkan BMS. First power this system has ever delivered. And it's working. 
Now, the real question is if how noise resistant it's going to be and all that sort of stuff. It's just going to die when I try to actually drive away. But this is a big, big milestone. Big, big milestone. All right, the next feature to be implemented, AC detect. So on the car side, this is done very simply because we have uh, this relay, which is powered by the supply of the uh, powers of the uh, charging fans. Uh, and uh, I just hooked up the AC detector line on the NO uh, connector. So as soon as this relay clicks, we're gonna see 12 volts on the input uh, that's assigned to AC detect. And what's gonna happen is, uh, right now it's just uh, hopefully gonna turn on the contactor and uh, let the car start charging. So, here we go. Uh, I have to hold it between my legs. And we could hear the contactor click. The contactor is uh, engaged. We see that uh, in six, which is assigned to uh, AC detect, has voltage, and the contactor state is one, so the contactor is enabled. And the battery voltages are very slowly going up. That works. AC detect, a go. Now we actually have another. Uh, feature which is the charger enable which I don't have a hardware to wear off right now but it should actually uh, be able to cycle the charger on and off uh, just through a uh, binary output uh, that feature is actually implemented right now but uh, I thought I had one relay more than I actually do so I can't actually wire that up so sadly uh, it <laughs> uh, right now if it charges to the full voltage it's just going to shut the contactor off uh, when it's done which is not great, there's going to be some load of a contact, but oh well. Oh well, it is actually uh, going to shut off uh, when we disconnect the power. So if we just pull the cord, yeah. pull the cord, wait a moment. And the contact goes off. So Finally, after years of owning this car, I actually finally have really rudimentary uh, charger automatics. Previously, if I wanted to charge the car, I would have to charge it, let it sit, then manually go and turn off the BMFs <laughs> when, I, when it was done. Uh, because there was just the old BMS, it had no, it had no awareness of AC. It just knew that, yeah, battery is connected and all is good, I'm going to remain on. So, yeah, finally, charger automation, amazing. But you still need to uh, implement the uh, actual uh, charger enable output, which uh, is currently lacking. But that's, good, just, that's just gonna be nicer for the contactor because it's gonna be able to actually turn off the charger itself. And I just stumbled on a feature which uh, we forgot to implement in this uh, uh, early build. It was overseen. So DC DC con uh, converter control, there is none. Uh, and uh, previously I've had some sort of hacky DC DC converter control, uh, and I don't remember, didn't remember how it worked. So it's just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna hook it on something on this. Uh, well, it turns out uh, I only have like relay outputs for drive enable and charge enable. I don't really have anything for like contact on or you know, something which is like on whenever you want for DCDs to be on. So I've done a really horrible thing. I'm just using both of these relay outputs in parallel. One is for drive enable. The other is for uh, charge enable. And uh, they run to this uh, horrifying mess here where they're both fed by uh, power from the, DCD, uh, from the BMS power supply. Uh, then there's like, like positive 12 volts. Then the uh, common contacts of both uh, relay uh, outputs are uh, common together, and uh, the outputs are also common together, and those then run to the BMS enable wiring. So essentially, as soon as the uh, BMS goes, I am going to charge the battery, or the BMS goes, I want to, you to be able to drive the car, uh, those are going to give 12 volts to the DC DC, which is currently. Uh, putting it just fine uh, during uh, charging. So 
that's going to work. It's not going to work uh, like when I actually want to in integrate the charger control because right now that would mean that uh, the charger would be on as, as soon as the car wants to drive and uh, the drive would be enabled as soon as uh, uh, the charger is on. So that's not good, but this will give me DC-DC while charging and while driving, uh, which is good enough because it's almost 6 a.m. I need to get going. So I need to turn all this mess into a drivable car in like an hour. Yay, go me. Well, the tin can seems really professional compared to that, doesn't it? Uh, I'm running out of time. The sun is rising. I need to be out of here. This was not supposed to take all night. But all the major functions are currently working or working. Uh, I have DC DC control. I have charger control. Well, ish. I have a charger contact control. I have a car drive control, which seems to run stable enough uh, as we're sitting parked. Uh, and uh, nothing's uh, been going on fire. So. I'm just going to slightly tidy everything up, make sure nothing's going too flying. This is all like loose and terrible, need to mount it somewhat properly in place. And there we go. All button back up. As if nothing ever happened. Except for get a fancy new UI on the PC. So, hopefully, I'm going to survive the trip home without having to use that. <sighs> now I just need to clean up after myself and get all my crap back in the car. Boy, oh boy, this was uh, more of a project than I anticipated, but fingers crossed it's going to work out just fine. We have This is going to be the first noise-like immunity testing to see how it responds to all the mess of noise in, in the car. So <laughs> it could, could still get interesting, but I really hope not. All right. Get ready for the first real test run. So the main power is already on. So this should really just be a question of uh, starting the motor and uh, driving out, hoping the contact is not going to cut out. So here we go. Contact engaged. Motor drive engaged. Handbrake off into gear and I need to be really careful because this lift is very very wide but here we go we're rolling The first roll of a tin can BMS. I want it install late. Beautiful. All right. It's fairly dark outside. Lights on. You're not going to see anything, but let's uh, actually drive around the block before we lock up and leave. So we are currently rolling. On Tin Can BMS, let's give it some juice. Yeah. Regen, there's no regen interlock. Enough, almost none of the features are actually hooked up. But we are driving, and uh, my concern is that there's gonna be some noise, uh, electrical noise that's gonna uh, cause the contactor to disengage. But this seems to be stable. We made it home with zero stall, zero issues. Uh, now, granted, I can't read this program while I'm driving, but I saw no hint of an issue of any kind. This still needs a lot of, uh, you know, monitoring and probably debugging and stuff. But everything seems to be fine still. The uh, contact to PWM circuit has not shorted out. Uh, Everything is looking absolutely fine. And now we can just turn off the car. And in a moment, ta-da, contact it off. And if I just turn the key on again, we get contact on. 
So we actually have a car which you can just uh, turn on on the key and the contactor engages. That has never happened before in this thing. You just have to manually turn the contactor on there, wait about 30 seconds, then you could go on the key. Now it's automatic. I can just flick the key and go and I can also just connect the charger and let it charge. Ah, beautiful. I'd show you, but it's really windy outside, so it's rather unpleasant. Absolutely beautiful. This has been a project in the making for so long. It's so nice to finally have it uh, installed in the car. So I'm going to have to thank you for watching, and uh, hopefully this project is going to pick up again now. Eh? Cheerio.